Hello everyone, so I've just finished painting uh, this group of 15mm uh, Cossacks. They are the contents of a box uh, sold by a company called Wargamer Poland and they're designed really to use in the game by fire and sword. Um, now, it's taken me ages to paint these. Um, my normal painting habit, as you probably know by now, is to have a number of projects on the go at once and I go from one to the other just adding uh, one layer of paint or something onto, onto a figure or a group of figures and then going on to the next project. Um, but in this case, there is, there is such a diversity of colour on here that um, the whole thing was just taking me forever. I think I think I started them about six months ago, and um, I finally decided about a week ago to uh, a week or so ago to uh, blitz them and get them done because they've been sitting on my desk for for ages. Um, I, I've got a bit of a um, ambivalent attitude towards by fire and sword. Um, I don't intend to do a review of it or talk about it in any great length with you um, because mainly because it's such an old set of rules now. I mean, I think it's been out uh, probably about five years, maybe longer. Um, and if you're not aware of the, the rules, then you're probably not going to be interested in the subject anyway. Um, but, but briefly... Um, the initial rule book, to my mind, is is probably the best turned out and best presented rule book I have ever come across. It, it is worth having just for the illustrations and the photographs and so on. It's a really, really superb book to to, to own. Um, the rules themselves are a really good set of rules as well. Um, a lot of uh, in-depth knowledge has obviously gone into constructing them. Um, the, the downside of the rules is that they are quite dense. It's a very large book and um, it was shortly um, followed by an equally large and dense um, supplement to allow you to wargame a slightly later period um, but they, they are playable they're just a little bit difficult to get into um, one of the one of the problems that I had I used to have with it so I haven't played it in a long time is that um, there are two levels of the game there's a skirmish level and then there's a sort of more a grander sort of scale a more divisional level and there's a big gap between the two. Um, it means that uh, if you wanted to build up a faction, for instance I'm building up the, the Cossacks here, um, it's a very long time before you can actually field a force that contains artillery, for instance. So uh, it, it can be a little bit frustrating in that, in that respect and, and it's a little bit frustrating in terms of learning and understanding the rules. Um, so really, they, they, it seems to me, and I might, be, I might be wrong in this, but it seems to me as though the rules got off to a good start and then didn't really take root in the UK. They're very popular in Eastern Europe, in, in Poland obviously, and um, seem to get a lot of uh, players attending tournaments in Poland who um, are all kind of based in the, the, the eastern side of Europe or in Scandinavia, places like that. You get very few um, Western Europeans travelling across to Poland to take part in the tournaments. And here in the UK, it does seem to have fizzled out um, at one time, you could obtain the figures through North Star 
or through a company called Staffordshire Games. Um, North Star seemed to have really reduced their stock and Staffordshire Games have just uh, disappeared entirely. Um, but it did mean that um, it was possible to pick up a lot of the figures on eBay going very cheaply and that's where I got this pack from about two, two years or so ago and I also picked up a lot of um, other box sets for other factions and I've just had them stored in my lead mountain but I couldn't resist getting them because they were, they were easily half the retail uh, recommended price I would say, I got them very cheaply um, and really I just picked these figures out um, of my lead mountain and just put them on my desk as I say about six months ago just to just to, um, as part of my sort of general ambition to kind of reduce the amount of unpainted figures I've got in my lead mountain so I didn't really have any particular reason to pick them other than it was just sort of random choice but since I've started painting them a number of things have happened that have um, that are beginning to draw me back into this game one, one is um, that uh, Wargamer Poland are just about to release uh, another set of rules for the game which is a kind of more of a sort of fast play um, set of rules so easier to easier to learn and to pick up and play with but also pitched at the sort of intermediate level between the skirmish games and the divisional level games um, so I think they've been aware of um, those sort of issues with the rules and have come up with a solution. So I've I've ordered those. Um, they should arrive uh, the end, towards the end of September. And um, another nice thing about the new set of rules, which is called uh, Task Force, I believe. Um, the English edition is coming out at the end of September anyway. Another nice thing about it is that it comes with a free figure, which is actually another um, Cossack figure, a hetman. Um, and uh, so that will fit into my army quite nicely. Um, another reason I'm a bit ambivalent about uh, the game, though, on the subject of figures, is that um, I, I, the, the figures paint up really well. I, th I, th I really like them in terms of the fact that there is such a large range of figures. Um, there's about seven different nationalities that you can play um, and each of those nationalities has a wide range of figures so it's nice to have that kind of coherent kind of homogenous standard of sculpting and um, style of sculpting as well um, the, the downside of them is that I, I, I get the impression that it's not particularly good quality metal um, some of the figures are a little bit um, strangely cast, um, they look a little bit odd, um, might just be me, I mean it's certainly since I've uh, been painting more Old Glory 15 figures recently, um, I, would, I would put these figures above the standard of the worst of the Old Glories that I've been painting. So they're not that bad. But the other thing about the metal is that it's very hard. There's a lot of um, excess metal and so on on the figures that you have to clean up. And the metal is really kind of brittle. It's very easy to snap legs and snap, snap the figures. Um, so you have to take a lot of care with them. Um, but having painted them up, I, I think they look pretty good. Um, one of the one of the things that sort of almost like a trick that um, that is being played on you though is that and and this is true of the photographs in the book as well is when you look at the figures quite close up you do begin to see the um, uh, some of the flaws in the sculpting and some of the flaws in the detail and so on. Um, but your eye is carried away from that by the number of banners and the number of flags um, that the figures, and the figures come, the box sets anyway, come with um, 
enough banners to uh, use on the figures in the box uh, and also the basing your eyes drawn away by those two things um, so the more figures you paint the more that effect um, sort of kicks in and um, what I'll do I'll show you the figures a little bit more closely now um, but just for a final thing on this on this particular box set um, which goes back to my point about how it's quite hard to sort of jump from the skirmish level to the divisional level game is this these figures are all command stands um, in a skirmish game um, you only need really one command stand and if you buy a skirmish box set um, it comes with a command stand anyway so th that was another thing that was kind of slowing down my painting it was knowing that um, it's going to be many many years before I actually have an army of sufficient size to field all these um, command stands in one in one game. Um, seems a little bit uh, a little bit superfluous to paint them all up, but um, as I say, I got them cheap, and it was um, so I thought it was worth it was worth doing. Um, right, so I'll just turn the camera off for a second, and then I'll give you a bit of a closer look at the at the figures. Right, so the box set not only comes with the standards that I mentioned but it also comes with the appropriate bases um, so there are two uh, Hetman in the box set this is one of them and he is based on a, a slightly larger base um, now um, I, I particularly like this this uh, this Hetman and um, he's one of the better figures, I think. You'll see, you'll see some of the worst designed um, in a moment. But uh, the two Hetmans I'm particularly pleased with. And the, um, of course, soon I'll have another one as well, because I'll get the free figure from... Um, pre-ordering the English version of the uh, the new the new set of rules um, so that's him anyway uh, and this is the second Hetman figure on a similar size base uh, quite a nice standard as well on that one I think with this one, yeah, with this one I tried to give him a kind of um, brocaded coat, as it were, to try and make it look a little bit like satin with a with a design in it. So he's, he's dressed a little bit more grandly than some of the other figures. Um, so you get two Hetman, then you get three Colonels. Um, now the colonels themselves are on horseback, but not necessarily the uh, the other figures in the um, in the group. Um, this particular one is smoking a pipe, which I quite like. They're quite fond of pipes in this range. They model a lot of them with pipes. Um, had another go, didn't work quite so well, I don't think, with. Um, Trying to give him a kind of uh, satiny look on his uh, on his coat. Oh, and I did that as well for the uh, standard bear. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so that's one kernel anyway. Uh, this is another kernel, and he is uh, stroking his long beard. Again, I think is another little uh, nice touch. Um, the drummer is an example there of a uh, slightly odd sculpt. He's got a bit of a kind of small head hidden under a hat. Um, but once you've got them painted up, you don't you don't notice these things so much. Um, it's that sort of uh, crowd effect that you get that your eyes are drawn towards uh, the colour and the the flags and so on and away from some of the deficiencies in the figures 
I mean, this is this is another colonel. This is the third colonel. Uh, he he is probably the worst figure I would say in the group. It, he's got a very kind of clumsy um, pose, uh, an enormous pistol in his hand, and he seems to be wearing. I took him to be wearing gauntlets or gloves. Um, that's how certainly how he's been painted on the on the photograph on the on the artwork on the box. He's wearing gloves. Um, but uh, I, that here's an ex another example of how the, not all the castings are are as good as some. There's it's a little bit of variation in the um, in the quality of them. Right, so you get three colonels, then you get two sort of slightly lower ranking commanders who are known as Yassouls. Um, and this particular one, the figure in the middle, is again is a really, I don't think it's very good sculpt at all. It's very hard to make out what the, uh, the detail on it was, and I'm not sure whether I've painted him. Appropriately, um, the sword was had a lot of extra metal on it, so I had to be really careful about trying to clean that up to make it look a bit more like a, a sword or a scimitar, or whatever. So I wasn't terribly happy with him. Um, again, on the co on the standard bearer's coat, I've had another go at trying to paint some um, uh, design on it. Got a little bit artistic with it. And uh, this is the other Yasol, the second Yasol. A bit happier with him. Another another one smoking a pipe, which I like. Um, and again with the standard bearer, tried to give him a sort of more ornamental cloak or coat to wear. And then you also get uh, two groups of Orthodox priests. Um, now the banners I love, um, I really like that kind of, I uh, don't know what the design is called, uh, not design, um, standard, the, the format of the standard, so it's hanging over that kind of cross shaped um, support, uh, so I really like that, but I don't like the figures at all, I mean this one's slightly better, but the character who's carrying a sort of uh, shortened sort of musket, like a blunderbuss type um, musket, is very lacking in, in detail and uh, not very inspiring to paint. Um, but again, you, you sort of lose him in the, in the mass when you put them in with the army. Now, um, that's one group of priests. The other group is exactly the same, but with a different banner. Uh, again, which I really love. Um, but the I, in the rules, I, I, th I would think that these Orthodox priests um, are intended to go with the sort of rabble, Cossack rabble, um, rather than with uh, the more disciplined and trained troop types that you can have in your Cossack army. Um, so that's the box set. Anyway, what, what I was contending to do um, is to film again. I have shown my Cossack army that I've got um, on a previous video, but I thought I'd include these in it now and do another, another little video just to showcase the entire army together. Um, so that will come up in a couple of days' time after you've after you've seen this video. Um, but what I'm intending to do next is um, oh yeah, I said there were a couple of things that happened to inspire me. Um, one of them, one of which was the new set of rules coming out. Um, but there's also been um, a channel. Um, it, the chap's name is uh, Alexander Kaczynski. And um, he goes by the name of Anatoly. He's got a blog called Anatoly's War, Ga War Room, I believe. Um, he's a frequent contributor to the By Fire and Sword forum as well. But he's put up an excellent set of videos on um, 
compiling your armies for by fire and sword and explaining the walls and you'll be, be able to find them by um, looking in my liked videos um, but that's kind of inspired me to get back into the game as well um, so what I'm going to do next is uh, paint up another box set of another nationality and I've decided to go for Muscovites um, and then I'll be able to play a skirmish level game um, between the Muscovites and the Cossacks and be able to show you that. But the other thing that did kind of um, link into this and uh, inspire me was um, Darkling of Eldridge's um, uh, video on the Mongols that he's painting up because there is a Tartar faction in this rules as well and I do have in my lead mountain um, a skirmish box set for the Tartars and I very nearly uh, painted those up first of all um, but I went for the Muscovites in the end because I think they're going to be slightly easier to paint and it won't take me so long um, but that is another kind of uh, entry into wargaming with Tartars um, is playing them for a later period um, using this set of rules. So anyway, coming up soon um, you'll see my attempt at a more sort of cinematic uh, video presentation of my Cossack army. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Bye for now.